Today I wanted to go over a couple modifications that have to be made so that we can mount IKEA European style hinges onto an 8020 frame. We're going to put a cabinet door here in just a minute, but I was going to start by explaining some of the changes and some of the reasons why we have to make a few modifications. Now you can mount this um, style hinge with this backer to an 8020 rail. The problem is, is that this hinge wants to be mounted back slightly. And the problem is that it leaves the door too far out away from the 8020 frame. From a structural standpoint, they'll work, but from an aesthetic standpoint, your door will be gapped out. And if you were to look down the line of your cabinets, you'll see a space behind your doors. In practice, if your door were to stick out on the hinge side, the, then the door would angle into the middle and then this door would angle the same way. And so when you look down your line, your doors would be kind of zigzag all the way down. So the idea with flush mount frameless cabinets is that the two doors come together here, the hinge mounts down the side and the doors should nearly meet. They should be nearly touching the frame and everything is flat and virtually gapless going down the line. And so if we use this hinge as it is, things aren't going to be um, flush and flat going down the line. Now these IKEA hinges are Blum hinges, Austrian made, and there's a lot more variety that they make. But the take home message is that none of them work directly plug and play with the 15 series aluminum channel. To solve this problem, I've identified a Blum backer that's compatible with the hinges and will work with some minor modification. They actually already have a sort of depression in the back and that's exactly where we need to drill them out so that we can put a screw through in these two spots. I'll put Amazon affiliate links to the parts that we're using in the description box below. Click the link. It won't cost you anything extra, but we'll get a few cents back and it really helps the Dreamboat project. I've determined that the smallest hole that I can drill in this is 15 60 force. That'll allow the screw that I'm using to go in smoothly and leave as much material as possible left on the plate. Step one of this process to get this plate to fit has been completed. I've drilled the two holes that I need. The next step is a short one, but what we need to do is file off just a little bit of these tips. This is a guide that would normally help you align the hinge on your wooden cabinet but in this application, they stick out just a little too far. They might make a little scratchy mark on the back of the door. These little backers are cast aluminum. They're really easy to file or drill, really. Um, you could do this with a grinder in seconds, um, doing it with a hand file for better control. It only takes about a minute. I've mounted T-nuts on here, and I'm just gonna lightly tighten it into place, taking a guess on about where the door's gonna wind up, and then I'll adjust as needed. One of the things I really like about this is that the door comes pre-drilled with the pocket for the hinge and two screw holes. And it has a cam, so once you line up this and get it popped in, the cam will actually hold without screwing. So for testing purposes, this is great. Once this becomes a fully moving vehicle, we'll want to put those screws in. Another bottom. some adjustment necessary, but basically that's the idea. So one of the things I've just figured out, I've just learned something, is that my bottom bar and my hinge cam cover um, intersect right here and the door won't quite close. And so I'm gonna have to do something different with this bottom bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this bar right now and see how it closes. For right now, I'm just gonna match the shelf level on this side. So 
So the hinge has a small amount of forward backward adjustment. I'm just going to play with that right now and see what the range is. The last step of the hinge install is to put on these two soft close units. They just snap gently into place. See that again? Yeah, it works. Uh, proof of concept here, these hinges will work on an 8020 cabinet frame. One of the main goals I had in trying to get all the different variations of hinges possible to figure out what was best was maintaining this essentially half-half split. So this door covers half of the post and this, whether it's doors or drawer faces, will cover half the post. And that spacing is key and that comes from how the hinge position. So any amount of washering, the spacer it, any of that affects how the door closes in the spacing. So the 15 series 8020 gives you three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch to equal the inch and a half. And it is perfect for these three quarter inch reveals. We'll wind up with just a slight space between. Well, we still have a lot of work to do, but we're really happy with how this is giving us a modern frameless cabinet look. So I'm just releasing these cams to take the door off. I'm gonna take it back off, put it away for safekeeping, um, but I can just kind of work it out of the hinge once the cams are released. 